Welcome back to the show. This is the uh, Texas Border Chronicles online show. Thank you for joining us here uh, in Laredo. We have a very special guest. His name is George Saldana, who's head of the the Interference uh, with Child Custody 2503 organization, which is actually a statewide organization to talk about issues affecting child custody. Welcome, George, to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. I know that you've been kind of busy, and uh, we've been kind of trying to get you down here because, uh, because you do uh, kind of provide education for a lot of parents all over the state of Texas. Can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Yes, sir. Our organization uh, basically helps uh, mothers and fathers with uh, custody issues when it comes down to uh, interference uh, with custody. Basically, the, the state law says that interference with child custody is a state jail felony. Uh, a lot of parents, and this is not a gender specific issue, this doesn't uh, apply only to men, but it applies to women too. Uh, we help mothers and we have a bunch of mothers that are going through the same issue. Uh, in so many words, what happens is that these children are made pawns in a custody battle or they're held uh, uh, they're held by the other parent and they're not giving uh, the other parent their rights as the judge has already deemed in the best interest. Uh, parents show up on scene and uh, you know to pick up little Johnny on first, third and fifth at six o'clock and they call the police and they just wanna have a relationship with their child, whether it be a mother or a father. And, and we just advocate that, uh, you know, both parents play by the rules for the best interest of the child. That's right. In fact, I, I, I you know, when I was a judge for over 20 years, actually 30 years, uh, one of the more difficult types of cases were always child custody cases because he said this and she said this, and unfortunately the child was the one that was being affected the most. Because when you deny the rights of a father or a mother to visit with the children, there's a psychological toll that affects the children, is it not? Yes, sir, and it's just not uh, psychological, it's emotional, mental. Uh, the, the state of Texas uh, has already done massive amounts of research. Uh, they use, uh, federal grant money to do this research uh, out of the University of Texas. So we've we've gotten all those statistics and it shows that, you know, uh, one of the statistics is, is that 80% uh, of children that come from a fatherless home uh, go back into the, the criminal uh, system uh, are, are cycled through, uh, you know, the, the correctional system for say. Uh, Seventy-five percent of females are, or young girls, ages 13 to 18, uh, that come from fatherless homes, uh, you know, become pregnant. And again, we don't advocate for fathers uh, or mothers. We advocate for parents to do what's in the it, best interest. You know uh, George, my experience has always been, uh, and I handle thousands and thousands of cases, that the ideal situation is always to have the mother and father to be a to play an important role in the child's development. Because if we, they don't develop that relationship with a father and a mother, uh, though they're divorced, chances are these children tend to end up having more issues, more problems, and end up having relationship issues as well as they grow older. So it's important that they, the, the parents allow you know, both sides, both parents, the mother and father, to develop that relationship. Uh, because if you don't, that child is always going to re will end up repeating that same cycle of having a fatherless relationship, uh, having issues with relationships in the future, or even motherless when the mother is not around and the father raised the child, then the child may end up having issues later on in life, dealing with relations with the opposite sex. So it's important that 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 there that there that there should be a relationship with the mother and the father continuously. Uh, good point. The the child needs a, a father for fatherly aspects, and it needs a mother for motherly aspects. Um, and unfortunately, we live in a society where, you know, mom and dad they hate each other so much that they tear their child up, um, you know, in the midst of it. And we advocate for parents just to follow the rules as the court has already deemed in the best interest. Uh, we also advocate to. Uh, educate police officers to mitigate these situations out in the field um, because if if we mitigate them out in the field uh, you don't have to keep going into 
uh, the family court system and dragging the child all over the family courts, uh, it's not beneficial for the child. The child is emotionally uh, stressed. And as they get into the teenage years, they start rebelling. They join gangs. They start committing crimes just because they're lashing out because they're missing out on a mother and a father. That's right. Uh, they certainly need to have a, a relationship with their mother and father. We're going to take a short break at this time. We'll be right back and we'll be talking to George, to you, George, about more specific situations of how people should handle situations out on the streets when the mother or the father does not want you to visit with the children. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, we do have with us uh, George Saldana, who's actually the head founder and advocacy director of this group called the Interference with Child Custody 25.03 which is a nonprofit organization that exists in the state of Texas to educate the parents, educate law enforcement, educate the courts in the importance of making sure that we lawfully follow the rules of the judge and to also make sure that the parents have lawful custody visits with the children when allowed by the judge. Uh, George, can you be a little bit more specific if, if I'm in a situation where my ex-wife doesn't want me to see the child, what should be the steps um, that someone should take with law enforcement? So normally you have a meeting point where you go to pick up um, the child. And for this, uh, you know, situation for this, uh, we're just going to call him Junior. So when you go and pick up Junior at your ex-wife's house and you knock on the door and she says, no, Junior can't come with you, we ask that you call the police um, and, and make an, an offense report for interference with child custody. We don't advocate to make parents felons. It's a state jail felony to retain the child. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've signed arrest warrants for those types of cases, but those are very rare. Right. Uh, they, they definitely, I would always tell parents when those things happen, make an incident report at the very minimal. You need to document because the courts are not going to listen to you unless you document. Right. And so you, you have civil contempt and you also have criminal contempt. The, uh, or the, the law is already, legislative intent is how the law is written. It's not supposed to be given an opinion or an interpretation. Retention and violation of a court order or judgment is what the law says. So when you show up and she just flagrantly does not want to obey the court order or turn the child, over to you, she's causing a lot of harm to that child already. The judge has already deemed what's in the best interest of the child, um, and it states that you pick up your child on this day at this time. Now, we ask that you call law enforcement, ask for an offense report, but more than that, it's very important that law enforcement try to mitigate these situations out in the field. By them mitigating these situations out in the field, um, they, they, can, they can basically help that child so much. Um, basically, the the child um, is not used as a pawn in, in this situation. And just telling them, hey, look, by you holding the child, you're committing a felony. You're not obeying what the court has already said for you to do, okay? That stops 95% of these issues. Um, we ask that you be polite to the police officers. Some officers are uneducated in this because it's been a tradition. It's been an ongoing thing. This law has been on the books for 47 years, um, but it hasn't been until our group uh, started meeting with legislators in Austin and with the District Attorneys Association that people have started to, to waken up to the idea that um, it is in the best interest of the child that they see both mom and dad. And so uh, a lot of people think that this just happens to fathers, and that's absolutely incorrect. Um, mothers mothers uh, go through this just as much. You're right. Uh, I saw that a lot in court. Uh, but it's important for people to understand it because they do also say, well, he hasn't paid child support, or he misbehaves, or this or that. But those are issues that go to court, and they should be dealt with in court and not there on the street because so long as there's a lawful order signed by a judge who found for the best interest of that children. He's already adjudicated that the father has a right and the mother has a right to visit with the children. We need to respect that particular judgment. If you still have issues with the child, I mean with the visitation, then take it back to the judge and let the judge make the amendments or the changes that you need to do. 
because if you don't follow the rules, you're violating the law. And that's this particular law that we're talking about. And it's important that we do follow the rules. So um, anything else you'd like to add, George, on this issue? Again, uh, we don't advocate to make parents felons. We don't advocate uh, to arrest parents. All we ask is that we have police officers that show up to these uh, occurrences that they mitigate the situation out in the field um, by encouraging the uh, the access and visitation with both parents instead of just holding back and saying, hey, look, it's a civil matter. You need to go back into civil court. We ask that the police officers actually help try to fix the situation for the betterment of Junior or that child, because right. that child needs access to both mom and dad. That's right. I know. I don't know how it is in San Antonio, but in Laredo, the busiest day uh, for these types of problems is is Thanksgiving Day. That is a very busy day for law enforcement. That's when they have the highest number of uh, either domestic violence or situations dealing with this. Um, parents don't want to pass the information, the, the child to the other child, to the other parent, and that's unfortunate. So hopefully by you coming here, George, we've educated a few of our le listeners and they won't take the law into their own hands and hopefully uh, follow the rules, whatever the rules may be that apply here. So I want to thank you, George, for being here as well. Uh, again, there's a group called the Interference, uh, excuse me, the Interference with Child Custody 2503, which is a nonprofit organization. I urge that you look into this. Uh, for those of you who know, want to know more, more about it, please check them out on uh, Facebook as well. By the way, what is your phone number where they can call you or, uh, or, or website that they can check out? We have two Facebook pages, uh, Interference with Child Custody, Texas Penal Code 25.03. We have a public page and a private page. We have a Twitter account, uh, Texas 25.03. We have an Instagram and we have a YouTube channel. Uh, that goes over your, your state rights uh, and your constitutional rights. You can find us there. If you need to email me direct, uh, it's Texas, T-E-X-A-S-G dot Saldana, S-A-L-D-A-N-A -A -A, at uh, gmail.com. Thank you. Uh, and I had an opportunity to check out the website. It's a very um, good organization. I highly recommend it. Again, we're trying to highlight parental rights here and the toll it takes on the children. It's important that we follow the law. And by the time the judge has made that ruling, uh, what's in the best interest, we should follow what the law says so we can avoid problems and we can lower the incidence of psychological damage we're doing to the children when we continue to uh, not follow those particular rules. Thank you again, George, for uh, joining us. Please like the uh, Facebook, our Facebook page as well for those of you who have not done that. Or check us out at tbcltx.com so you can get this particular video as well as our YouTube channel. Subscribe so we can get some more of the videos back to you. Thank you again, George, for being here. And until next uh, next time, have a blessed week. Thank you.